Hey everybody, my name's Carrie. Thank you so much for being here. Today is December 10th, 2021. This will be my uh, Christmas gift making episode. I have done a lot of making for Christmas and I have given some of those gifts away and so I can finally show them and talk about them. Um, the way I did it this year is as I finished them, I recorded a little clip so that I could talk about it when it was still fresh in my mind and share whatever I wanted to share about it. And I'm going to put all those clips together and um, put them in with this video so that you can see. So it'll be um, from like August, September to, you know, the beginning of November. Um, and hopefully it works out and it turns out okay because <laughs> it's all I got. Uh, last episode, a few people had comments in the the comment thing below the video about what sweater I was wearing and I was wearing my Alaska sweater and I never talked about it because I think I've shared about it before and I just didn't even think about it. So the Alaska sweater is on Ravelry by Camille De Descoteau and it is got color work at the bottom. Um, it's a DK weight sweater paid for pattern and I made mine a little bit longer. It's a cropped sweater but I made mine like full length what would be comfortable for me I didn't do the trees on the sleeves and I did like three quarter sleeves because that's what I like and that was the sweater I was wearing today's sweater is by tin can knits this is the harvest sweater this is a free pattern it's a worsted weight sweater and I held two strands of fingering weight together one dyed in this like pinky coral color and the other was um, undyed and held them together to get kind of a worsted weight um, just an open cardi kind of thing so that's what this in, this one is I just forget to do that I don't wear sweaters real often so I just didn't even think about it so have you been making stuff for Christmas I have <laughs> and I'm really really glad that I started early because I'm still finishing up a few things um, I still have just the, the tail ends of some things to finish up for uh, my coworkers, and we will do our exchange next week before we go on winter break so um, that will get done and I will have to record something later because I can't show it because I haven't given them just in case um, something else I've been doing, I got an advent calendar from my friend Michelle of the Naughty Knitwits. She puts together an advent calendar for me for Christmas. And um, I've been slowly making my way through that. I stayed up to date last year and this year I was really good until the third. And then as of the fourth, I started getting behind. And now I'm like three or four days behind. But it's okay. Cause I'll get them done. I'll take them when I go on vacation, but I am crocheting granny squares and I am using the solid granny square pattern recipe formula, uh, from Sandra Paul, who is cherry heart designs, I think. And, um, she has the Battenberg blanket pattern and it's basically I just use that but just made them a little bit bigger and I just go around till I have like about seven rounds and then they end up being about four inches ish and that's what I've got so far this year um I just opened today's the 10th so she's she outdid herself this year she uh, wound them in little mini cakes and she labeled them all which I was so thankful for because there's a lot of times she has gorgeous yarn and so I know I'm gonna love everything she gives me but then you're like what is whose is that that is just so pretty I need I need more of that or whatever and then you know she wouldn't remember and you can't tell and she made little tags for every single one so this tells me that this was artistic yarn by Abby in the colorway watermelon this one came with a progress keeper and the progress keeper is by three by the sea and I love it because I use progress keepers all the time. So that is going to be my in my pile of need to crochet. So, um, so yeah, so I've been working on those. I was working on a stocking cap. So my idea this year, 
um, is at Christmas time we go away with my husband Jim, my son Robert, and his husband Michael, and the four of us go away for four or five days, um, usually to the coast, and that's where we spend Christmas. And we just, we hang out with each other, we play games, we drink, we do whatever. <laughs> and so on Christmas, they all wear their, their goofy Christmas sweater, ugly Christmas sweater, whatever you want to call it, and I don't have one. Um, I am not going to make one. I, you know, there's, they're not expensive. They're like something you'd buy at Walmart and I may still get one. I'm not sure, but I thought this year, I thought, oh, it'd be really cute to make like a stocking cap, you know, like along to the point with the ball on the end. So I started making it and, um, this pattern, oh, it's called striped stocking caps. It's on Ravelry. It was free and this is it so far. So the pattern shows bolder stripes, like, you know, double the size. And I was afraid because I wanted to carry the colors up. I was afraid that'd be too far to carry it. So I thought, well, let me make narrower stripes. Well, then I end up looking like Where's Waldo. So I'm not sure. I haven't finished it. I'm close. I'm really close to the end. Um, I'm just not sure. <laughs> because... I don't know. I don't want to look like where's Waldo. And my thought process was, oh, you know, when I walk during December and it's cold and I put a hat on, I'll put my stocking cap on. Well, you know, we're in the middle of December at this point. It looks like it's really big, but it's okay. <laughs> so imagine that finished with a pom-pom on the end. <laughs> Not too bad. I don't know. So I don't know if I'm going to finish it. We'll see. I am using Impeccable. It's an acrylic yarn that I got at Michael's. Um, it was inexpensive, nice nice yarn for a, an acrylic yarn. So I got red and white. And there's my Where's Waldo hat. So I was really trying to do the jogless join and then I was doing really good and then I forgot. And then, and then I remembered and then I forgot. <laughs> So oh, if I wear it just right where that kind of hangs over, you probably won't see. And, you know, like I said, it's for for Christmas Day when we're sitting around or going for a walk on Christmas. So I need to finish it, but I really was trying to work on finishing up the Christmas gifting stuff. So um, easy pattern, just kind of go round and round. Um, something else I did is uh, a group that I belong to, I guess. Um, I consider them my friends now. We've been meeting on Zoom once a week and, you know, as a knit group and from all over the United States. And it's just been a lot of fun and a lot of different people. And it's, it's just kind of cool. It's We started it at the beginning of COVID. Um, and uh, it's, you know, just something I look forward to and we do it. And so... This, last year and this year, we decided to do a uh, Christmas card exchange. And so this year I thought I had the idea like of a fabric postcard. Now fabric postcards were something that were pretty big like oh, 20 some years ago. And I remember making them and I would, you know, you'd send it, you do like an exchange, kind of a postcard exchange kind of thing, or you just send it to somebody. And I thought, well, let me do Christmas ones. So I made some Christmas ones. I've already sent them out. I sent them out early because I know our whole mailing system's like slow. And I don't know if it's going to take extra time because they have to hand cancel it. So I sent mine early, but they turned out really cute. I was really happy with them. I just took strips of scrap green fabrics. I, I don't have yardage, but I have scraps dug out a bunch of green ones, cut different widths, made like a fabric of strips, and then using my um, block lock ruler to make the triangle and the square shape, cut the triangles out of that, that strip fabric, and then used uh, some of my ice dyed fabric as the background. So I made a bunch of those, made like 25 of them or something, and I've sent those all out. But um, this is what a fabric postcard is. So when I made, after I made them, I thought, I went to my post office, I made one and I said, can I still send this? Cause it's been a long time and I didn't know if, if we could still do it. And of course the clerk was like, I've never seen anything like that before. And so she's like, yeah, you can do it. You just have to pay extra postage because you're hand canceling it. So you get these forever stamps that are 88 cents as of now, end of 2021. 
and um, you stick the stamp on, you write on the back, and send it as a postcard, and they just hand cancel it, and hopefully everybody gets them. This is the one I used um, to make a tutorial. So I did film a tutorial on how to how to go about making it, and um, it's already up on my channel. I made it like a couple weeks ago because I thought, well, you know, you still had time if somebody wanted to, to do that as a Christmas card idea. Something is poking me in the shoulder. It's bugging me. Okay, sorry about that. Very distracting. So anyway, I made a bunch of these. This is the one I did for the tutorial. This was a little Santa that was left over from a, another project um, that I didn't make a film of. And I hopefully have a picture of it because I broke my phone and my new and so my old phone was a Samsung 8 so it's kind of oldish and it had an, an SD card in it with all my photos which is awesome because I didn't lose my photos but the new phone doesn't have an SD card reader <laughs> so I can't I don't have them on my new phone so hopefully I hopefully I have a picture that I made these as a Santa block and I put four of them together to make like a candle mat mug rug type of thing um, and on that one I did French knots for the eyes for this because it was a postcard I just drew them on and so same kind of thing just took a couple strips of fabric used my block lock ruler that makes a triangle on a square um, because this was a leftover block it was a four inch block this is a six inch postcard so I put the black on either side explain all that in the tutorial so if you're interested in learning how to make a fabric postcard check it out links below um, I'll put the links to whatever down below as I usually do okay so let's get on to what was what I made as Christmas gifts so this is a little montage I started filming this probably August September I think and up and up through now so it's at different times could be hot could be cold <laughs> hopefully I look okay <laughs> now I have hot air um, so anyway let's watch that and um, and I'll see you on the other side hello I want to share with you a gift that I made for my friend Lori um, I made the Zorzel shawl I have made this shawl in the past I made it last year and I loved working on it. I, um, it's a very wearable shawl for me. It's crescent shaped, uses two skeins of contrasting color. Sorry, this is in a black and white, but my printer died. Um, this is by Lisa Hans and it, I made it using this gorgeous combination. So this is Lolo Did It yarn that I got a few years ago and just held onto it because I knew it just needed to be something special and I couldn't really figure out what to make. And I thought, you know what, these are Lori's colors. And so, um, so I did it and it is great. It is a crescent shape, which I feel is easy to wear. Um, you tassel the ends. She can take those off if they bother her, but I think that's pretty cool. I love the way it twists around. Um, so this was an MCN base. This was her Walkers and Blood combination that she came out with a few years ago based off of um, The Walking Dead. And I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't look deadly. <laughs> But I think it's a great combination, and th these are colors that I think Lori will wear, so I hope that she likes it. I hope she likes the tassels, because I love having the tassels on mine. But it um, it wears very comfortably, and it is so soft because it's MCN. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be one of Lori's gifts, and fingers crossed she likes it. Hi. I wanted to share with you a make that I did as a gift that I will be giving to my friend Michelle for Christmas. I saw the pattern by Maxim Sear called Al Pacchino, and it's a sweater pattern and I'll put a picture of the pattern up here. And I had the idea of just using the color work chart and making a pillow out of it. So um, I bought the pattern. It's an intarsia color work. I think, do you call it intarsia color work? I think you do, which I had never done before. This pattern is knit um, flat, so you're going back and forth, and so um, I, it was a first for me. 
So I um, I had some yarn that I wanted to that I thought would work really well, and I did it and I made the pattern and I liked it so well I decided to keep it for myself. So this is what I made, and part of the reason too is because well I'll we'll, we'll talk about it. So here's the pillow. And this is actually in the pattern, it's on the front of the sweater. So I just use the chart to be able to uh, do this alpaca chino or alpaca design um, on this, making this fabric. So this is just some green that I had hand dyed, I had it in my stash. And I used some undyed, this is DK weight. I used undyed for the alpaca mixed with a mohair so it has some fluff to it and it was really a lot of fun to make the feet and the face are duplicate stitch so that was it's been a long 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 time since i've duplicate stitched so um that was pretty fun one of the reasons why I decided to keep it is because I decided that it goes in my house better than it would go in Michelle's. And I think I did my color work a little bit too tight. I felt like it was loose, but I think once, once I stuffed it in this pillow and it was needing to kind of stretch around the pillow, um, you can tell where it kind of pulls in. And I wasn't really thrilled with that as far as giving it as a gift. So I decided to keep it and I bought the pillow form up off of Hobby Yarns and this mohair lace is a Hobby Yarn as well and it is their Diablo, I'm sorry I just spilled my tea on it, it's got a little tea stain, but it's their Diablo brand, I don't know, Diablo, it's their Diablo yarn <laughs> and it's 30 mohair, 30 nylon, 30 acrylic and so these held together did the alpaca so because that is a little bit thicker because i added the lace weight the alpaca kind of sets sets out from it a little bit um i had this batik in my stash and so i just made a you know an envelope style so you can pull it off and wash it if you want to but it's not going to get dirty because it's not going to be really like used as a pillow so I thought, oh gosh, you know, I just love this so much. And because of the way it pulled, and it's like, nope, I need to make Michelle's out of something different. So I made it again. <laughs> and I made hers in blue because this is more Michelle. I also decided to give them a little bit of grass. So I used the same green from the previous pillow. And I just did like every fifth or sixth stitch. I don't remember, probably fifth. And just did a little bit of green on the bottom same design i gave it a gray face because the black um, didn't set out set, set itself apart enough from this dark blue this dark blue is one of my hand dyed yarns as well uh, same thing dk weight did the llama or the alpaca the same way with the undyed and the mohair but i decided for this um, on the green one i bought the pillow form and i um, knit to the, that size. I, I knit it so that I could make it to that pillow form size. And I went by, I didn't do gauge because I figured it really didn't matter. Um, it wasn't going to fit a body on a sweater. So I looked at the gauge that was suggested in the pattern. So how many rows made so many inches, figured that out. How many rows the alpaca took, so that took up so many inches, and then how many inches extra I needed for the sides. And it worked. It worked really well. Um, was it luck? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, you know, I gave it some room around the pillow. For this one, for Michelle's, I decided I was just going to go ahead and make a pillow. So, same thing on the back, envelope style. I made a pillow out of muslin. And this ended up being 16 inch square. So I probably could have bought a foot pillow form, but I had the muslin, I had the stuffing, pillows are pretty easy to make. And so I made it. So this was using this dark blue. This is the green that was used for the grass, which is also the color that is used on the other pillow. So anyway, that is my alpaca chino pillow. 
and I, it was a lot of fun. It was really neat to be able to just use um, a design that I liked, but I didn't really necessarily want to make a whole sweater with it. And I think a pillow looks just really nice. And then I can see it all the time, not just when I'm wearing it, because it'll be out on display. So hopefully she likes it. I think she will. And um, yeah, so that's that's that make that took a while because I had to make two versions of it. So um, back to the regular program. I want to share another gift that I made for a Christmas gift. This will be for my friend Leslie. Um, I saw this pattern for a tote bag on uh, Round Rabbit's Instagram account. Nancy was making some of these totes and I thought of Leslie right away. I don't know why I just did. And it is the Kit Supply Tote. And it is a big zipper bag. And here it is. It's a pretty good size. Um, I made the large. It comes in two different sizes and I chose to do the large for her. The inside, so I have a separating zipper so it opens all the way up. And it has pockets, some cute fabric on the inside. And it is uh, the stabilizer that you use is um, soft and stable and it is a foam kind of a stabilizer. It's meant for using in bags and things that you want to give some structure to. So it's like a thin foam. Um, you can sew right through it. It was pretty easy. It's the first time I've ever used it. It's been around for a while. I've just never had the need to use it. Uh, so I made the tote. It's got a pleated gusset, but it opens up pretty big. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. Um, she could easily fit a sweater or one of her big shawls that she makes or something. And I was thinking maybe like if she wanted to have it in her car or take it to work with her knitting project or something in it. So um, that is the Kit Supply Tote by Anila Hoey. And uh, it was it was interesting to make. It was different than anything I've ever done before, um, but it was nice. And then I also had found this zipper pull, this little mushroom zipper pull that I thought went with it really well. So um, that will be part of it as well. And I've got some other things I'm going to put in there for her. So that is that Christmas gift. I want to show you a table runner that I made for a friend, a co-worker of mine, whose birthday is early December. Um, I wanted to make something for her, didn't know really what I was going to do, and um, so when I was out for a walk I had this idea of taking strips of different colors of green fabric and making something tree-like. Um, being that her birthday's in December, I'm sure people who have birthdays in December don't really want to get Christmas themed things for their birthday. So I don't think this is necessarily Christmas, but more winter, I suppose. So what I decided to do is take, I just pulled out of my scraps. I don't really have a stash, but I keep larger scraps from previous projects and take scraps of different greens, sew them together to make a fabric and then cut that strip set into triangles for trees. And then I thought, you know what? I had made this pattern. I don't have a picture of it because somehow I deleted the whole quilt folder on my phone that has pictures of quilts, so I don't have a picture of it. Um, I will try and figure out what episode I talked about this, but I had made this quilt for a friend. Um, so, uses these big triangles. When I made this quilt, I decided to make plastic templates for the shapes instead of using the paper template that was in the pattern. It made it a lot easier to cut. And I thought, well, I've already got this. So let me just see if I can make that work. And I absolutely love it. So I made this table runner. I took different green fabrics, cut them into strips, different widths. I did like an inch to, some of them were two inches, but like an inch and a half, and just tried to make it a little bit more random that way. Sewed them together, cut out the fabric, as I made the strip set, cut out the fabric with my template, and just kind of followed the directions for the pattern, 
in getting the background and stuff like that and added the little trunks of the trees and I really am so happy with how this turned out I may make one for myself <laughs> so um, yeah got it quilted I put this backing which can can look a little Christmassy because it's got some red and green flecks in it but I don't think that this necessarily reads Christmas I didn't want to make it too long because I don't know what size table she has um, and so I thought this is a pretty good length it's about a, it's about 36 inches long and um, yeah so that's that's that it was really fun to work on um, and I am really really happy with how it turned out Let's turn into that that trees but I don't think it looks Christmassy none of the fabrics well one fabric this fabric is kind of Christmassy but I mean really overall it's not too Christmassy I love the fact what I really liked once it was done and I was putting well I was getting to the point where I was putting it together I'm like I love the fact that it has a little bit more of a modern feel to it um, so there you go so hopefully hopefully she likes it I think she will <laughs> um, and then that led me down another whole rabbit trail of doing things with that style of triangle and I will share that at another time so Christmas gift done or not Christmas a birthday gift done so um, yeah that's really nice okay so as you can see I was a little bit busy <laughs> but I loved it and I'm so thankful that I started early it was the first for me because usually I think of things to make like last minute like I know I'll make you know all this stuff and then I don't have time so I was really glad that I started early and I want to try hopefully next year to keep that going as I think of something just go ahead and make it instead of being like oh I should make that for so-and-so for Christmas and then wait till Christmas to do it I'll do it right away I'm hoping I'm hoping I can do that um, but anyway I hope you all are getting ready for the holidays whatever it is that you celebrate and um, I hope it's all well and enjoy getting together with your people whoever your people are and um, be safe be healthy and I will see you probably after Christmas so thank you for watching my little ramblings here and I'll see you later bye